Oh, okay. Let me see, it should come up. Okay, we are, are we on? Okay, sorry. Sorry about that, guys. How is the um, audio? Is it good? All right, sorry about that. Little technical difficulties tonight. Apologize to all y'all waiting. I, I really do apologize for that. Okay, so tonight we have Katie uh, moderating. Ellie had a date, so she's not with us. And we're going to do a little recap on what we did last time. Um, first, I want to go over a few of the things that we use that I find useful when I'm, when I'm punching. And last week, I didn't mention that I like to have tweezers. So... If we can have some tweet, if you have some tweezers, it's always good to have a pair of tweezers just to like pick or pull things out when you need to if you redo if you need to redo something. Again, I use the Ultra Punch, the Ultra Punch, and I use the Ultra Punch threaders, and I put either a post-it note wrapped in uh, packing tape or a, a card wrapped in packing tape. So I don't lose it. The other thing is, is how I organize my threads. I either put the end of the DMC, uh, little, you know, the number on the DMC on the end of this, or I write in pencil. Um, I find probably writing in pencil is the best because I sometimes lose those little pieces. They slide off. So I put all my DMC floss with the numbers on this to keep it <clears throat> on clothespins to keep it situated. Um, last week I used the ballpoint pen and people had a heart attack. Um, I was rereading some of the comments that were left last last time <laughs> and people like freaked out because I wrote on the weaver's cloth. It does not matter because you're not going to see it. We're going to punch even if you didn't punch densely you wouldn't see it and you don't this is not going to be finished. It's only when you finish punch needle, you're only going to finish it to the punch needle. Um, so you can use whatever you want. I use ballpoint pen. You can also use micron pen, which is a permanent type of marker. Um, you know, whatever, whatever you like to use. I use whatever I have on hand, which is typically a ballpoint pen, but I do have microns as well. I also used a Mighty Winder. The Mighty Winder is a, a tool that helps you get torque to really close your punch needle hoop. Um, I have wrist problems and hand finger problems and elbow problems. So um, it's nice to use one of these. These are about 22 bucks, 21 bucks at the Shepherd's Needle. It's called the Mighty Winder. Um, I mentioned last week, I'm going to mention it again because she deserves to get some mentioning. I finish for Anne at the Shepherd's Needle and um, therefore I get all of my punch needle products from Anne. And um, she's a fantastic lady, as are all the ladies at the Shepherd's Needle that will help you. If you need punch needle supplies, please give Anne and the ladies at the Shepherd's Needle in Little Rock, Arkansas, a call. Okay? All right. The net last little piece of advice is last week I showed you one of these, which is the Puffin um, Thread strand separator so you put your six strands of thread so as it comes off the skein on the clip you clip it on there then you you hold it and let this you hold the thread and it unwinds 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 puffin i just was alerted today puffin has quit making these 
so they no longer make these. Now then, I punch with six strands almost all the time because I'm a rebel and I don't want to separate the strands. But I do have these. I have two of these. And um, they no longer are making these. Anne has only one in, sh in her possession. Only one of the puffin thread separators at the shop so no longer being made grab it up if you want one okay so briefly to rehash what I taught you last week on punch needle was when you approach your punch needle design you want to do all of the inner workings like the straight one line type punches first anything that's on the interior that is detail very detail so when i would do this one of course we did the abc the one two three the crow the flower stem the fence and the flag okay the flag pole tonight we're going to punch the hill the interior of the hill i'm going to start with that to show you how to um, punch in the interior of the hill what we will do next, you, I want you to punch the hill. And then basically, I think what we're going to do is we're just going to finish this up on our own. I'm going to talk to you about how to do it because you know everything now, guys. So there's no reason for me to come back and tell you anything because um, I, don't ha I don't have anything else to tell you. That's punching. But um, so we're going to do the hill tonight. We're going to leave these little things, these little tongues or pennies blank but we're going to do the hill then what i would like you to do next time is to do basically the rest and i might have a couple of watch me punches like i did last week on sunday that i put up and um that's how that's how we'll we'll go about with that then so uh let's go ahead and get to it and um, but before we get to it, I want to bring out a couple of my patterns and let's talk about how we would approach some other patterns before we start doing the fill in on the hill. OK, so <clears throat> here is a Little House Needleworks punch punch pattern. Let me get it out of the. Let me get it out of the uh, case here so you can see it. Okay, so Little House Needleworks. Tell me, someone, what would you start first? When? How would you approach this? What would be the first thing that you would start punching on? I, what I would do, is I would punch the house. First, I'd punch the windows and the door. Then I'd punch the body of the house. Then I would do the roof. Then I would probably do the stem and the leaves and the flowers. Then the flag. Then the liberty. Then I would do the heart, the 1776, these little dots in the middle of the tongues at the top. Then I would do all the fill in. So it would be all the hill, all the background, the black, and then all of the round, the tongues. So that's exactly what how you would approach it. You want to look at the small like you exactly everybody's saying the letters. Yes, that's exactly what you would do. You want to do the letters. Then I would, you know, however, it doesn't really matter what sequence. It's just that you want to do the interior details before you do any background. That's how you that's how you approach any kind of of um, design. Now then, before we get started with the fill-in, was there any questions or anything that I need to clear up from last week? Do you ever need to replace your punch needle? Does it dull? Okay, the question is, do we ever need to replace our punch needle? Does it dull? No. I don't really, I mean, it might, it might get a little bit dull. I haven't noticed that and I've punched for a long time and I've not really noticed that mine got dull yet, but maybe you might, but I don't know that I've noticed that personally. So I would say no. Would you start at the end and go toward the vein or start at the main vein and stitch out? 
of the flower are we talking about? Jane, can Jane Mears, can you kind of clarify what you mean? Start at the vein and work out. Okay, so then another question. What do you do when your fabric does not hold the floss? I had a loop in the bird's tail, pulled out the floss, and now I am unable to repunch that area. And it's probably because have you punched it over and over? And so let's let's address that. Sometimes if you pull it out, you've punched it and you've pulled it out and um, did you take your toothbrush and try to wiggle it back in? If that doesn't work, like if you've punched it over and over and over and over, um, what you need to do is spritz that area with some water. Um, now, again, let's talk about if it's, if it's not color fast, which if you're using DMC or Valdani, or, um, which is frequently used, uh, Weeks is frequently used, um, you'll be fine, okay? But um, what I would do if you had like a place in your in your area where you had punched and punched and punched and punched and punched and it, and the floss will not hold in there, I would spritz it with water, kind of use my um, my toothbrush, you know. So let's say this is the area I'm going to spritz it with water and I'm going to use my toothbrush to try to wiggle those out. Then let it go and let it dry and see if that would. Um, if that will plump those threads and, and get them closer back together, okay? If that does not work, this is what I would suggest. And um, people are might think that this is a crazy thing, but really, honestly, this would work, and it has worked for me in the past. Take a little edge of your corner. So let's say that the hole is, um, let's say the hole is right up here, okay? And you've got some punched around here, but this hole remains empty. So you would take a piece of the corner of your, of your weaver's cloth like this. Just take a little corner of it. And I would put just a little bit of white craft glue on one side, okay? Then I would place it on there and gently tap it, let it dry, and then go back and punch it, okay? She said she only punched it once and she could not punch a second time. I don't know what your problem was. Are you, or did you sh make sure that it was not catching on anything? You, you didn't have it caught on your hoop. You didn't have it caught on your hand. It wasn't caught on the side of the, of the, um, of the fabric. Nothing, it was not caught. The next thing you need to check is make sure that you have the medium. If you're punching with six strands, you need to make sure that you have um, the, the medium size needle in. Um, if it's still getting caught, like if you it was you pulled it out and you pulled the thread back up, sometimes that the thread will get a little um, distorted or like there will be flakes of uh, cotton that comes off and so it won't run through the needle nicely pull out some and cut it off and start fresh so then jane clarified um of a leaf so do you, start you if it has a vein down the middle jane you want to do what's ever in the middle first it doesn't matter if you come from the bottom the top the side whatever it doesn't matter you do all inner details first and then the surrounding punches later do the colors matter in the order no Okay, so what do you do for stitching with over dyed threads like gast that doesn't come in a solid length off the skein, only comes in about 20 inch length? Okay, so what do you do for stitching with over dyed threads like gast that doesn't come in a solid length off the skein, only comes in about 20 inch length? Actually, gast and um, Classic color works come in uh, one yard length when you cut it in half. When you take it off and cut it in half, it's 18 inches. So what you do is you just thread your needle a lot. That's what you do. Sorry, that's the question. You just, I mean, that's the answer. You just thread your needle a lot. Um, that's why I have six punch needles because I thread them all up. If In situations like that, I thread them all up and I go. For animals, do you save the eye for last or start with the eye and work outwards from the eye? You work, you do always do smallest details first, so you would do the eye. And let, let's go ahead and talk about that a minute. In this, um, in this, 
in our if you're doing American Roots, it'll say in the instructions for the flag, <clears throat> it says flag stars mix together two strands of 336 and one strand of 3782. So you will notice in the picture that it has like little places that look like stars. So you're going to punch that first. So you're going to punch, punch, punch just a, randomly a, through, a few stars in there and then fill in with the blue um that's that's exactly what i would do that's how you would do that um if you have like snowflakes when you're doing a, a snowman sometimes you'll have like these random punches where they have say do snowflakes you punch those first you'll have to end off every time and then um or drag it but that's wasting you know like i dragged up here um, in some areas when I skip over things, I'll drag and make a loop. Uh, I don't do that in, on because that waste thread. But that's exactly what you that's exactly what you do is you're gonna do inner details first and then surrounding background second. Follow up on gas. Do you punch until the end with those shorter links and then pull it back out from the front to the back or do you get used to how much thread you have and know when to stop? You'll get used to knowing how much thread. To, but it really doesn't mean, it's not like cross stitch where you have to stop and weave under. You just punch until you don't have any more thread in the in the needle anymore. Um, and you'll know because you won't see it coming out the needle. And at, once we get everything punched, that will be the next thing. Um, we're going to take about a two week break here. We're going to, after I get the instruction done tonight, we're going to do a couple of um, weeks where we're going to let everybody fill, finish up. And then I'll come back with a live that says, we'll show you how to clean up the front to make it look perfect. Okay. All right. So is there any other questions? I don't see any, so we'll go ahead and get started here. Okay, so we're going to load up our needles. We're, we're going to do the hill. So the hill is 30, 11, and 30, 12. Um, now then, if you look at the picture, she kind of like did a row of, she, it's random. It's however you want to look. So it's random. Look at your picture if that's, you know, what you want to look at. And um, you can see that it's very random. There's no rhyme or reason. And when you do Michelle Palmer uh, punch needle patterns, she's the same way. She's very random in, it's like painting. And so um, I'm very random on how I do it too. I just, I don't have any rhyme or reason. So anyways, I'm going to start up with the darkest, which is 3011 first. So remember when you're threading up your punch needle, you're going to go down the barrel to the end and then you're going to go between the threader I can get it between the threader here And then down, out, and in the back of the needle, towards the bevel, and then back out the back. All right, so. Now then, this is the darkest, so I try to think about, like in a painting, what do you see? You see a lot of shadow, a lot of... Um, like things make shadow so I try to think where my sun would be coming which is probably way overthinking stuff but that's what how I think about it so I try to do my shadows I try to figure that the sun's coming this way so how would it be a shadow so there's going to be more shadow over on this side so we're just going to go ahead and punch remember down all the way down a few threads of the weaver's cloth and just up and down make sure that nothing is ho is hanging up your thread so 
So what I would do is I would kind of go around with the darkest thread first, probably all the way around the hill once. Now then, I tend to, when you're doing this, I try to make it look kind of like a, a painting. I said that just a while ago, but I try to like make there look some movement in it. So just random. It's random how she did it in the picture and it's random how I did. I've already punched this once before and gave it to a friend for Christmas and um, mine was very random. So that's about all that we have to do is just you're going to outline your hill. Maybe go around your your letters with the dark and um, then you'll just kind of randomly go back and forth however you want <clears throat> with the 30 go back and forth between the 30 11 and the 30 12 okay so you can see I've gone all the I've halfway around up to here and then I will continue down all the way around Okay, so let's pretend that I've gone all the way around. Then we're going to come in here with our next punch, our next color, which is 3012. Remember number one. So I've laid this down the dark so you're going to come up right beside it and this is where I would start making some some different choices I might start going over this way and then go back up this way It's really, this is really random, however you want to do it. Um, you want some movement in your piece because, you know, you want to see some movement in it. Um, and it's just very random how you can do it. It's just whatever you want to do, honestly. This is like free form, okay? So you can see I've done, and then I'll come back and fill that in with three 12. So that's what you're going to do essentially. You're just going to fill in this whole hill minus the tongues, okay? And then, um, and you're going to see once you do that, I saw a lot of comments this week that people were like all upset because they thought it didn't look, theirs didn't look good. Yours will look great. It'll look awesome once you have all this filled in because once you have it all filled in, they're all going to stand up straight and nice and full and tall. I had several people say that their crow looked an, like an alligator. So does mine. It's a primitive crow, so you don't have to worry about it. Mine looked like a beetle or a click beetle or a stag beetle or not a crow too. And um, don't worry about that. Okay, is there another question? Yeah, so would you vary the loop height to get some texture in large areas? If you want to, Becky, that is perfectly up to you. Some people, like when they're doing a Santa Claus, will make very um, lar long loops for the beard. I, um, I don't do that. I like mine to look like a, a, a hooked rug, so I want my heights all the same, but that's... But that's just me. You do what you want to do. And Michelle, we cannot get the camera closer because I, I mean, I can hold it up, but I can't punch and hold it because this is the best I can do 
because people complained about the the area last what the view was last time and I can't I can't do it any closer I apologize I'm doing we're doing the very best we can but as far as to see how tight the rows are that's not this isn't a good one because we don't see we're not doing it but let me show you one that has my other touches and I showed this last week so if you watched last week's video you saw I punch very tight that's the back side of a current project. Can you see any space in between there? Not very much. That's how close I punch. I like to punch that tight. You don't have to punch that tight, but that's how close I punch. That's the front side. So that's what it looks like when you punch really, really tight. You, wouldn't, you won't be able to see any of the underlying weaver's cloth, okay? So here's again, here's mine back side how close I punch see okay does everybody get that how close I you don't have to you don't have to punch that tight but you'll find you might want to play with it to see what your sweet spot is I prefer I prefer mine very very tight anything else does anybody else can everybody see this and understand what I'm saying about punching tight again here's the front side okay so there you go. You're going. It's very random. Again, let's look at our picture. Refer to your picture. You can see that. See how she's done just waves and randomness on her hill. That's what we want to do. Okay. Okay. So the next thing is now. Then I have always been one to never be structured with anything that I do. Um. I'm not above changing anything that I want to change on anything that I either cross stitch or I punch. So let's talk about this flower. This flower right here, it's purple. I didn't like that. I don't like it at all, to be honest with you. <laughs> Sorry. But um, what I did on my one that I punched this previously, I made this look like a sunflower. So I did some of this dark fence color in the center. I didn't even do different ones. I did the, um, so let me show it. So like this center and this outer center, the middle center, I just stitched all of that in the dark brown. And then I went and got a 729 gold, which is, I don't think is called for in our palette, but I did 729 gold and I did the last circle and then all of these little circles as a sunflower because I, I didn't I didn't like this purple I didn't like this purple so that's what I did for the sunflower if you want to you know feel free if you want a pink flower do a pink flower I don't stick with a lot of times with color palettes now then on the flag how we will do that is like I told you the stars you're going to punch single things of, of white just dot 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 through there a couple you know a few of them and then you'll fill that in with blue then it's going to be red white red white red white okay you don't have to worry about do I do this one and then do I do this one do I do this one do I th you don't have to do it sequentially you can punch for instance all the red and then skip a row do the red skip a row do the red and then come back in and fill the white. Since there's no details in here, you don't have to um, do that differently. You can just do it however you want to do since it's just rows. Um, on the house, you're going to do the windows first. And they're going to be just like the ABC. So you want to do it very close, very close, very close as you go down the windows. Then you're going to do the door. Then you would do the roof and the chimney and then finally fill in the house. When we get to the tree, you're going to do the circu curly cue here. I think that's in 311. 
and then you will do the darker green and the trunk and so by that time once you do all of that you'll have the hill filled you'll have your flower done you'll have your flag done you'll have your house done and you'll have your tree done then I would go back then and do the sky and the sky is the same thing that she did with the hill it's two different colors and you see that it's just very random now one thing I did on the one that I punched I punched it primarily in the darker gray color um, what is the sky the sky is 524 and 3022 what I did is I the lightest color whichever those ones are what well, I think it's 3022 but don't quote me on that I made it look like a curly cue of smoke was coming out the chimney on the on mine and I had predominantly the dark color as the predominant amount of the sky and the white wispies I just kind of had randomly placed all over and one of the the white wispies was smoke and I just did it do 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 like a curly cue coming out of the the out of the chimney once you get the sky done then you want to come down here and use all your leftover floss in these pennies at the bottom and it would be just like the flag you would do the outer one or you can start at the inner one and then work your way out to the top so you would do this little yellow red what and you don't have to follow these she says in the in the instructions um, use leftover random pieces and I did mine all the same and since this is kind of a patriotic one I did red white and blue pennies down at the bottom uh, so then you can do the whole 310 black outline and then we'll be done then we'll be done with the punching so I know that this is kind of quick and short tonight but that essentially I mean it would be boring to just sit for me and watch for an hour and me punching because you've got the ba the basic punching down but I, there is something I'm going to talk to you a little bit about punching in the middle in the minute but um, as far as technique goes but that is basically how I approach a pattern is again you do all the interior details of every piece that you have I break down every pattern into uh, into objects so like we last week we had we had focused on the hill and um, but and then this week we're gonna finish the hill and we're gonna focus on the flag which is in the interior of the sky we're gonna finish the flower that's in the interior of the sky then we're gonna do the the curly cue on the tree then finish the tree then the trunk then the house we're doing the windows the door then the you know on and on and so forth and so on um that's how you approach punching on every every pattern once we get this all punched we'll come back together so i'm going to give you about two weeks do you does everybody believe that two weeks is like a i think two weeks is doable don't you to get this done let me hear your thoughts on that before i go on to something else two weeks like so two weeks from today does that sound great or do we need longer than that when is two weeks from today that's like middle of june isn't it yeah june 11th june 11th so how does that sound june 11th is that good perfect for d thanks d she's always agreeable d is i think two weeks would be great yes yeah, should be enough time awesome okay i do too i think it'll i think it'll be enough time too okay so remember to embrace your creativity you want to just like don't look at this picture and think okay she did 30 11 on here and then i'm going to do 30 12 don't do that um embrace your creativity do have that hill look the way you want it what have it if you don't like 30 11 and 30 12 change it to a different color you don't have to you don't have to do anything that they say okay always remember that you can do you, you can make this this is your project okay all right so let's talk about a couple of punching techniques because I really just kind of glossed over this last week and I want to really talk to you about this because I feel there's times where um, this comes in handy okay so your basic 
your basic punch needle uh, way you punch is going you're going to always lead with your beveled edge so you're going to go down with the beveled edge and you're you want the beveled edge to lead okay that's the best way i mean that's what most teachers will teach you to punch okay and they say that you have more control and and that it you know whatever okay and it does look good right i i mean i punch that way too but i also want you to know that you can go from the side so you can lead with the side of the bevel, beveled edge okay and have you all tried that have you tried doing it from the side now that i think you use a little bit more floss i think it's a little bit chunky chunkier on the back you can kind of see that how it's a little bit more chunky on the back than what leading with it is but in your instructions it says that that's the best way to um that's the best way to to punch if you look in your instructions that come with your ultra punch they'll say that you can punch two ways you can go forward with your bevel edge leading like that or you can turn your needle and lead with the side either left or right and that's kind of good when you're filling in because see what I'm doing I'm le I'm going I'm leading with the side of my beveled edge and then I'm going to go up one so I'm leading with the beveled edge forward and then I'm going to go down the side like that and I'm just laying in color see how I'm doing it Jocelyn said that yes the side stitches were a lot more even for her and Roper the sweet pea said they also punch sideways yeah I I feel I think that it's um, and that's why I wanted to bring your attention to this most teachers will say only punch leading the beveled edge and then I read actually read the instructions when I started um, teaching myself and I had taught I'd kind of the first person that kind of led me I didn't ever attend a class but when I bought a, my first punch needle needle at my little my needle workshop I'm sorry I'm going through menopause and I like get all tongue-tied and can't think of words and stuff sorry but um, when I first went through my my needle workshop they told me to always lead with the the beveled edge and then when I came home and I was reading and and I stuff they said that you know I read that you can do the side and I think personally I agree with the other ladies that have said I think that the side leading with the side is better see how that is just it's just really smooth I really feel like I have more control see that so now I will notice you will notice okay so see I'm a little bit choppy there and I've got some holes now I wasn't paying really good attention because it's kind of hard to talk and and punch at the same time but try that practice with the side punch okay punching sideways I think that that's you might find some of you that really struggle with um, punching or hand control or your wrist hurting I think side punching actually is a little bit easier on on your wrist now then see I'm using my toothbrush and see it's gone all right so any other questions before we uh... so a hoop question from stitching by the moon uh -huh. I purchased a nine inch lap stand if I want a bigger hoop do I have to buy the set or can I use the rods in a smaller hoop I have from the nine inch hoop to work well the bottom of the nine inch hoop is well will they don't okay so you know on these hoops you can use this one and then you can use this one both of these will will punch but if you want a larger or a smaller one they don't sell the ones that come are not to my knowledge sell the ones that come with the 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 circles the clips that the that the legs fit in they don't sell those so you'll have to buy another lap stand that's why I have two and then do you ever take two colors and mix them together in your needle yes 
so you would take three of one if you're stitching with six strands you can do three of one color and three of the other color and it and it looks kind of not exactly but kind of like a uh, over dyed thread and then how high is your table my tabletop seemed to be too high and my bottom hoop is too big for my lap okay so what i do jane is i typically don't um, punch at a table this table is one of those white uh utility table. one of those white utility tables like you get at menards or lowe's or wherever your local handy shop is um sam's also has them probably costco does too so that's what th we're down in the cave and this is what i i work on so um i have a uh, office chair that i can move up and down so i'm at the very highest height of my chair and um i so it's very comfortable for me to do that. But when I am punching upstairs in my bedroom, I set, I'm the same. I don't like how the lap stand feel. It's not tall enough for me probably, and it's not comfortable. So I put a pillow on my lap and put the lap stand on the pillow. And that makes it like the perfect height. So try that, Jane. Try putting, putting a pillow on your lap. That makes it, easier to um it moves it up closer to you and um i feel like it it helps me uh if that see if that will help you and then jan asks, could you use a whisper thread to give beards or animals more fluff i yes you can and on a whisper thread it would depend on the on the thickness i would definitely punch it with a medium or a large needle uh probably whisper would just probably be a just a, a medium needle any other questions i will say jan they'll just do in a different um a loop size like moving it up to two or moving it up to three does make it look like fluff and um i think that you wouldn't need you know whisper would cost more and so i think that you could get the look of whisper kind of our dimensionality to a animal coat or a beard just by changing the loop size so changing it if you punch in on a one you could punch a two or three so Alrighty, guys, I think that's it. We have like terrible, I don't know if it's colds that we have here. My son started working two weeks ago and he has like a chest cold. And I don't know if Katie and I are beginning to get a cold or if we, it's pollen because pollen is everywhere here in Indiana. But I have had like a sore, scratchy throat today and I'm kind of tired. I'm fully immunized so i know it's not any, and i can smell and i can taste so i know it's not anything like that but i think we're going to go ahead and close it for tonight um i know that this was kind of quick and i'm sorry about that that it was quick but there's really not anything last week was the biggest time the biggest bunch of of everything that um everything that we needed to say so two weeks we will um, give you two weeks to get yours done and then we'll come back and you will, I'll teach you how to clean up your front and then we'll talk about finishing okay so thank you all very very much you all have been so very kind to me and left such positive words on Instagram and Facebook and here on the video and while we're doing this thanks so much I appreciate all of you as does Katie and until Two weeks from now, we'll see you then, all right? Thanks so much, guys. I really appreciate it. Bye-bye.